Hey, hi, my name's Lindsay and welcome to my living room. Today we're gonna paint this country road and we're gonna use perspective to get there. It's not gonna be the typical sort of perspective that you use a ruler for, because we're gonna be painting, but we're gonna use sort of the same techniques to get there. When I do this painting, I'm gonna use a big brush and a small brush. So I have a very large brush and then I have a very small brush. If you have any brushes in between, please feel free to use whatever you're comfortable with. But I call this sort of a quick coverage paintbrush, and then this is kind of the little detail paintbrush. And I'm going to be using this one for a good portion of the time here. So I'm using my large and small brush. When I'm not using them, I'm going to put them back into my water cup. It starts out with fresh water, and then I want to talk about the amount of water to have in your uh, cup because I don't have the water all the way filled up. You can sort of see where my water line is, and that's for a couple of reasons. If you have so much water, it's all the way up to the top, you're gonna have water running down your handle and onto your hand. So you don't wanna have too much water, so it's kind of covering all of your handle, and it, it's just more to dry off. And then secondly, if you have sort of a lighter cup, once you put that big brush in the water, it's gonna tip that cup over. Uh, so I've got fresh water to start with, and I get asked a lot how often you should be changing your water out, and the answer is whenever you feel like it. It's your painting, and you want to be comfortable when you're painting. For the most part, I don't really wash, uh, wash my water out. I don't really change my water very often, uh, but there's some times when you really want to go from a dark color to a light color, and that's when I would suggest um, changing your water. Also, I've got a rag that I'm going to be using to dry off my paint brushes. So every time I take my paint brush, big or small, out of the water, I'm going to want to try to dry it off as much as I can for most techniques. There's a few techniques in, not today, but in a couple of different times that I try to have a little more water on my brush and I'll let you know when that happens. But I've got my rag, paper towels work just fine. I'm just trying to kind of reuse. And then I'm using acrylic paints. So acrylic paints today, every day, are like a plastic. Um, once they get on your clothes, you've got about two minutes to get them off before they become a permanent addition to your attire. So I wear an apron or just sort of things that I don't mind getting paint on. But we're using the color wheel today. I've got my um, red, yellow, and blue. So those are our primary colors. And then I've got white and black. And you can see I've got a ton of white and not very much black. So I'm only going to be using a little bit just to kind of get us a brownie color, which is a lot of fun to make. But I'm going to use a lot of white, a lot of blue, and a lot of yellow. So keep that handy. I've also got, it's on a paper plate, but what I call a palette to be fancy. And then I've got this extra one because I'm going to be mixing quite a bit of greens today. So I'm going to keep this one handy. And then if I need it, I've also got some extras sort of off to the side over here. And I always want to have extra paint handy. So I've got my paint is sort of in big tubs. You can get the, just those little sort of tubey squeezy things and just kind of have it handy. I like to keep a good amount on out on a plate so I'm not getting anything in that tube or jug or whatever you have it in dirty. So I've always got some stuff to start with and then a mixing palette so that I'm not getting all my other colors super dirty too. Um, and with all that being said, we can go ahead and get started. So I'm going to put this down in the corner over here. And what I would like to point out, I'm going to use this 16 by 20 canvas. But this isn't the first time that I painted it. You could see, you saw that I had the one before, but I also have my little scratch paper here. So I'm never gonna paint on a big large canvas unless it's something I've really got kind of worked out in my head and I don't mind going over. I always like to do little thumbnails or just a smaller section of it, work the kinks out over here, kind of decide on what kind of colors work really well versus how tall your tree is and all that kind of stuff. So I've always got just sort of a little thumbnail before I paint my regular size one. And then I'm even going a step farther and painting it on another one so that I can show you guys. All of that means is I would suggest painting it on a piece of paper, or cardboard, something disposable and on a smaller scale. I'm going to be working pretty quickly. And um, a lot of that is so that my paint doesn't dry, but also for the sake of not having like an hour long painting tutorial whatever I'm calling this today. So when I'm doing the first round, I'm gonna kind of start out on a small piece of paper. I even do a couple of different little thumbnails, kind of deciding on composition and stuff like that, where I even want the road and all that kind of stuff. 
So get the kinks out first. If you're following along with me, follow along on a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard, something disposable, because I'm gonna go kind of quickly. If you wanna work on a larger canvas like I am, absolutely do so. And I'll try to kind of put out there times when it would be nice to kind of take a break and let your paint dry a little bit. So when I get started with today, I'm gonna be using my big brush and we're gonna start in the back and sort of move our way forward. So everything is kind of layers. And before I do that, kind of have in your mind where your painting is going to go. I luckily have one already done. So what I want to do is talk about the sky, because that's the farthest thing in the back. The sky is going to be a good portion of my background, so um, I'm going to say at least the top half I'm going to do this with. And what I'm going to do is I've got my big brush, it's pretty dry here, and I'm going to take a bunch of blue, and then with the blue I'm going to go all the way across the top, and then just sort of patch it in, in this first top half of my canvas. Then what I wanna do is with a very dirty brush, I'm gonna go in and get a bunch of white and I'm just gonna go over all of that so that it all blends in and sort of wispy color change blendy, technical terms. So I've got my big brush. I've got a good amount of paint just on the end of it. And then I'm gonna work kinda quickly. So I'm gonna grab my canvas up here so it doesn't fall. <laughs> And I've gone into this top section, and then with whatever is just left on my brush, I'm gonna come through here and just sort of put some patches down. So what I'm doing is thinning out this top section up here, I don't need too much paint, and then I'm just sort of scrubbing around this top half of my canvas. So now, I've got a dirty brush, I'm gonna go into my white. I call this the dirty dip. So what I'm gonna do is pull a big scoop of it from the side that's closest to the blue because I'm gonna get that little bit of white paint dirty. Now I'm gonna go over all of the stuff that we have just done. I wanna work kind of quickly so that it blends in and it doesn't have a bunch of dry marks. So every time I go into my white paint, I'm gonna be pulling from that little section that's already dirty. And first round through, I just wanna kinda get that color in there. So. I'm gonna take a couple of rounds. So I'm gonna go through and I wanna blend all this color in so I don't have a bunch of open canvas or canvas that's not painted. And it's also lightening up this darkest part because I want it to be a little darker up here, but not so dark that it looks like it's a nighttime scheme here. All right, everything's blended. That's my first lap. My second lap through is to always gonna be sort of a more delicate stroke. So that first one, I really pushed down hard, mixed all those colors in, and then I'm gonna sort of do my artist lean. It's when I lean back, take a good look at the whole thing compositionally, and decide if I need more white or more blue or whatnot. So I need more white. I'm gonna go in, I wanna start a little bit lower because I've got a little more white on my brush here. And now I've got a nice light hand. And I'm going to start doing these nice upward strokes, overlapping, kind of going back and forth. And I'm not trying to get a pattern. What I'm really looking for is just the direction of my strokes. So it looks like I've got some clouds that are sort of lifting up into the sky. I'm not pushing down too hard. The difference in the amount of weight you put on your brush is gonna give you sort of a different blend. So if you push down really hard, all that color is gonna blend in and become one sort of solid color, which is fine, but it's not what I'm going for. I'm just dragging my paintbrush across the canvas here. And all I'm trying to do is really make sure that there's no one solid color. And that was a little bit patterny, so I'm gonna break that up there. Take nice deep breaths and relax for this part. So I've got this real nice light wispy sky. It's got a lot of blue at the top and not so much down at what I'm gonna call my horizon line now. It's not gonna be the forever horizon line because we're gonna end up putting that little mountain range in the background, but it's gonna give me a start to where we're gonna put our road, which we're gonna do right now. All right, so put that big brush in the water. We're gonna mix a brown color, and there's a lot of different ways to get brown, but this is the way I like to make my brown. I'm gonna use my small brush, because I don't need a ton of paint, but I'm also gonna use my small brush to kind of put in that um, road. So, I'm gonna need make a brown. Brown is, I'm gonna say four colors, but there's really mostly just 
a bunch of yellow, and I'm going to take some big old scoops here and move it over to the side. A little bit of red, so I'm going to do one scoop of red and just, well, let's mix this in first. So I'm making this nice orangey color. I'm going to set that down now. So I've got this nice orangey color, and what I want to do is make it brown. So just the smallest amount of black is going to get me there. So I've got my small brush, it's dirty, and just the tip in the black paint. So it is just literally the tiniest little amount of black, and I'm going to start mixing this in. So as I go through, you can see it's starting to dull. It's getting closer to a brown I want. I'm going to go in, get a little more black at a time until I get brown. And I said four colors. We've used three so far. That's because I'm going to use a little bit of white. It's going to be really dark with that red in there. So I'm going to start with just a little bit of white and mix this around and see how I like it. I'm not so worried about mixing it completely more than getting a color that I like and enough of it to get this whole road in here. Whenever you're mixing color, it's kind of hard to mix the same color twice. So I would just recommend making more paint than you think you need. I'm gonna go in just as I say that, I wanna make sure I have enough. So I'm going in for another scoop of yellow, just a hint of red and a tiny bit more black. And now it's getting real dark, but it's a nice, good brown color. So I'm going to go into white, and I'm going to get just a little bit more. Whoa, that was a lot. Just a little more here, and lighten it up. So there's this term, it's called noodling. And noodling is when you're done, and you just keep working on something for the sake of working on it. When I mix colors, I have a whole lot of fun playing around with colors and adding and... and kind of pulling different shades of the same color around. So I'm gonna call myself noodling here. Here's my brown. It was a whole bunch of yellow, a little bit of red, a touch of black, and then some white to kind of get me a little bit of a lighter shade. Okay, so here's how I'm gonna make my road. I've got my small brush, and then when you think about one point perspective, usually you're thinking about it kind of right in the middle, and that's how I'm gonna use this. So this road, it's got a little bit of a squiggle, and it ends just off of center, and that's for me, because I never want anything to be super symmetrical. I want it to be a little bit asymmetrical. So I'm gonna start just a little bit off of center here, and then as I start to go around, I wanna make sure that I'm ending right around the center just because that's where it's gonna give me the most appeal for my road to start to kind of widen out. So just like in life, I'm always gonna start out really thin and then I'm gonna to try to grow a little bit at a time while I get there. So I'm gonna make just one little line and I'm gonna squiggle it. So I'm gonna go off to the right there and then it's gonna pull around and then just sort of drift down into the middle. So now I know where I'm ending. It's going to end right up there. I went right into the horizon line just a little bit. doesn't matter because we're going to have our mountain range on top of that, so that'll clean all that up. But I'm going to go down to the bottom. And I know that I want this bottom section to be the widest point because that's what's going to give me really that kind of perspective, making it really wide or bigger in front or down at the bottom of your canvas. And then as it starts to get to the middle, it needs to get a little smaller as you go or closer together or uh, less visible. So there's not so much contrast. So as I'm going through here on the bottom, I'm going to use my hand as a measurement tool and I'm just going to sort of make my bottom area, this lowest section of the road, I should say, about one Lindsay hand width. So I say Lindsay hand because it's a little bit large. I call it a man hand. It's all right. I've <laughs> come to terms. But if you've got a dainty little hand, and I say one Lindsay hand width, give a little extra. If you have just like a Mongo hand huge, you can maybe bring it in a little bit, and thanks for that. So now that I've got my wide, I want to use that curve, going around that curve line, and I just want it to drift into this top section. So I don't really want it to get into that top section because the more I paint over it, the wider that's gonna be, and I want it to be really thin. So I'm down off the bottom. I know that's how wide I want my road to be. 
And I'm going to give this a little more of a sway. See, I've gone into that and I made that a little bit wider, but that's okay. So now I've got this looks sort of like a witchy hat. It's sort of a warped triangle. I'm going to go in and quickly fill it in. So I'm going to get a big old glob of paint and I'm going to push this around real quick. So the reason I'm doing that is because I want it to be wet when I mix in just a couple of extra colors here, just to give it a little more depth or contrast, like I talked about. And I'm going to very lightly go over this top part just to give it a second coat of paint. Okay. So now I've got a nice coat. I'm going in the direction of my road or the contour of it just to kind of make sure that it looks like that's where the road is trailing off to. And your brush strokes are now sort of like bumps in the road. So I've got a dirty brush. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna sort of with a little bit of white, I'm gonna start streaky, streaking or stroking it into your road, but I'm only gonna go up about halfway up the road. I don't need any kind of contrast in here because with perspective, you can see more details the closer you get and then as it drifts away, you can kind of see a lot less details. So I'm not going to worry about the top half of our road. I'm just going to go in here. I don't want to cover this whole section, but I'm just going to kind of streak it in. I'm not worried about the outside edge of my road here because we've got grass to put in. But I do want to make sure that I've got some parts that are a little bit darker, some parts that are lighter, and then if you feel like it, Take a couple extra finesse strokes of white just to make sure you've got that nice pop. So my road is very yellow and if that's the case for you and you don't like it, I'm going to take just a little bit of red and I'm going to do the same thing with red that I did with the white. There's just a lot less of this. So I'm going through with a little bit of red. I'm just going to kind of streak it through here. Before I get too carried away and I have this weird red road, I'm going to stop. So now we have our sky. We have a nice sort of streaky road that's got a lot of perspective in it. And then as I go through here, I can always make the road a little bit bigger. Let me see. Nah, it'll be all right. I'm sort of painting off to the side so I can only see most of what I'm doing. All right, I'm throwing that little brush back in the water because we're gonna start talking about the grass. So the grass, we've got two big sections here. And I'm going to call it blocking it in because I'm just going to go through really quickly with a very kind of grassy green color and we're going to block this in. Then we'll talk about a little bit of shading from like the bushes that are on the, the sides there. So I want to switch back to my big brush. It's always a good idea just to start with a fresh clean brush, but the big brush we've had white and blue on here. So it's not going to matter too much because we're going to use those colors next. But I'm starting with a fresh brush just because I'm a little bit OCD and it makes me feel good about life. So I cleaned it off and I need to dry it off. Whenever I'm drying the brush, again, because the water goes all the way up to the handle, I'm going to kind of bring it all the way up the handle and then come down. And I like to give it little taps, maybe give a little bit of a kind of wiggle back and forth. So it's nice and dry all the way up to the metal there. All right, we're gonna make green. Green is three colors and I'm gonna use a lot of two of them. So let's see, I'm gonna try to hold this like this. I'm gonna use an old plate here to kind of give me a little more stability on this plate. It's getting a little bit watered down. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna make green. Green is gonna be a whole bunch of yellow and I want to make sure I've got enough for both sides there so I'm gonna go with my big brush and get two big old scoops of yellow I'm gonna get one scoop of white and throw it right on top of there for two reasons I want to make sure that the green that I'm using especially right now is nice and light also our yellow is very thin or my yellow is very thin so I'm just sort of trying to thicken it up a little bit so it's not so see-through so now I've got a very light yellow color and I know I want a grassy green color, so I'm going to use just a tiny little bit of blue at a time until I get there. Sort of like how I did the black into our orangey to get that brown. So going in, I've got just a little bit of blue here. And I'm going to start to mix this in. So far, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty grassy green. All right, so so far I've used a whole bunch of yellow. 
a little bit of white, just a touch of blue. If you go a little too far and you've made sort of a tealy or a more green than you want, leave it. We can use it later and start to make a new pile. If you keep just adding yellow in, it's not really going to change a whole lot because yellow is a very light color. So I've got my real grassy green color. I did a whole bunch of yellow, a little bit of white, and just a touch of blue. I'm going to go in here. I'm not going to worry about that horizon line. All I'm trying to think about is not having open canvas between the two. And I'm going to work down here. Don't get too attached to any of this because we're going to cover a lot of it up. All right, so I'm going to move in to that road. If it goes over it just a little bit, that's better than having open canvas. So I'm just going over that road to make sure there's no open canvas and it's filled in. So I don't know how well you're paying attention to how I'm holding my brush, but when I'm doing that big coverage, I'm gonna use this big fat section of my brush and really push down to move that paint around. When I wanna get right up close to my road, I'm gonna switch that brush over and I'm just gonna use sort of the tips of that brush. And you can kind of spin that around to get where you like it. So I'm going up to where I don't have any open canvas between the sky and my grass. I wanna go right up to, if not just slightly over my road here. And I'm gonna use sort of the tips of my big brush. If you don't know where it is, the tip of your big brush, start on the outside, slowly work your way in until you see where that line's going. The more you use the same brush, the more you'll kind of get used to it and know it's uh, kind of benefits and not so great parts. <laughs> I've got technical terms all over the place. All right, so I've got a whole lot of paint over here that I'm just gonna try to thin out just a little bit. There we go. All right, so sometimes in art, you've gotta think ahead. We don't really think ahead in life so much. But in paintings, I kind of know where I'm going. So I know I want to have these big bushes coming in on the sides going up, but I don't want to just have this super grass green color and then nothing. So what we're going to do is sort of kind of guess where we're going to put our bushes in. And then if we need to play around with it a little bit later, that's okay. But this is the, I'm going to say least important thing. It's just sort of adding in a little extra depth. And on the totem pole of important stuff, I would say the top is probably the road and getting that little bit of drift in there. And then the second thing would be getting colors that you like. The very last thing in there should really be where this kind of shadow goes. So I've got my dirty brush, big brush. I'm gonna get just a little bit of straight blue here. Now what I'm gonna do is start in the very corner and I'm gonna start working my way into where my road is, but I'm gonna stay right around three-ish fingers away from the road on this bottom section. And then again, we're gonna use that whole perspective stuff. And as I get closer to the top, I'm gonna worry less about how close to the road I'm getting. So I'm gonna stay about three-ish fingers away over here. But as I start to work in, I'm just gonna kind of move this up that way, there we go. I'm gonna start to just kind of bring it a little bit closer to that road. So right up there. And as I come back down, I want it to drift farther and farther away. And I don't want there to be a super duper solid line. So I have a lot of green up here, which wasn't intentional. But like Bob Ross would say, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. I'm gonna take that paint and bring it down a little bit. There we go. So the more times you blend into colors that are not dry on top of each other. So that grassy green color and that straight blue, the more times I go into it, the more it's gonna kind of mix in. All I'm really looking for is this sort of inside our grass area is just a little bit darker than right against that road line. So maybe think of it as like the ditch. So it's a little bit lighter right there. And then once you get into the orchard or whatever you wanna call these, I'm calling them bushes cause they're just big and round. Uh, but they're whatever you want them to be. So I also want to make sure that that line isn't super duper solid. So I don't want it to just be a super clean line. If you're having trouble, use your finger. 
When in doubt, finger paint it out. I'm just gonna kind of rub right across that edge there. Now I've got a nice sort of soft blend and I'm gonna do this to the other side. I'm gonna work kind of quick so that it doesn't kind of dry. All this over here doesn't matter so much, so I'm just sort of blocking it in. And I'm coming right up to my road. I want it to be a little bit closer up here. And coming down, it starts to drift further away. All right. So I've got this very sort of messy grass area, which is fine. I want to soften that edge right where my sort of grass is being shaded to where it's right up against that road there. It's a little bit wider down by the end of the road than it is up towards that very tip where it's sort of drifting off into our horizon. And now I need to put in a nice little mountain range. So my original painting that I did, the little tiny one that I did, had a lot more blue in the mountain range and I really liked that because it kind of gave it a little bit of what's called atmospheric perspective. So as things go back into space, it's gonna get a little bit lighter. It kind of looks like there's fog or whatever and a lot of times it's probably smog. But it does lose contrast and anything that would be black like right in your face, way far back, it's gonna look like a light gray. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush a little bit here. Not too much, I just don't wanna have a ton of paint on my brush. Cause I'm gonna make another green, but this one I wanna be a little more teal and I also want it to be pretty light in color. So we're gonna use the same three colors. So I'm gonna use blue, yellow, and white to get my light tealy green color, but I'm gonna use more blue this time. So I'm saving this first grassy green color because I can use that for the trees, like those pointy trees that are kind of be in the background. So I'm gonna make a whole new pile of paint. I'm gonna take a big scoop of yellow, a big old scoop of yellow, and let's say a big scoop of white. So there's a lot more white in this one than there was in that one. And then I'm gonna still start with just a little bit of blue because I can keep adding blue and I'm gonna mix this in. I'm trying to kind of pull these colors in so I'm not taking over the whole plate. I need more blue for sure. Going in, I've got more blue. Oh yeah, I like this color, but it might be a little too dark. All right. So this is a very pretty color. There's a lot of it and it's way too dark. So what I'm gonna do is sort of pull a little bit off to the side over here. I'm scraping it off a little bit. Just using what's on my big brush because it's holding so much paint, my goodness. All right, so I took a little bit of this because it's too dark and there's a lot of it and I don't need all of that. So I took a little scoop off to the side here and I've got a big old scoop of white and I'm gonna mix this in. I've gotta hold it straight up because I'm gonna Drip it all over my little carpet thing here. All right. So now that I lightened it up, it's a lot better. It looks more green now than ever. So this is why I noodle. So I've got just a tiny little bit of blue in here and I'm gonna call it good no matter what cause I'm just gonna keep mixing and keep mixing. All right, so with this color, I'm gonna put in a mountain range. This mountain range is I'm gonna say 80% covered from our trees and bushes. So I don't need a lot of it, but I do, or I, it's gonna be all the way across the canvas. And I wanna make sure that it's at least, you know, three fingers from the top. I might come down just a little bit to clean up just that little section of my road that got a little wonky. But I wanna make sure that I'm going all the way across and it's not up super high, so I'm not gonna take up all of the sky but I'm gonna keep it within, you know, two or three fingers. So three fingers up is about there. And then I'm gonna swoop it down just a little bit. But I wanna make sure that it's not, so it's not going right into the ground and then back up. So I've got a little hilly thing here. I don't want it to be super duper symmetrical. So I'm putting a little wiggle in. There's a bigger little mountain and it drifts off. So I'm using my big brush to do this. You could, if you care more, switch to your small brush, 
do that little line of the mountain range and then fill it in. I've got a lot of paint on this brush and as I'm pushing across, I end up holding my breath. So make sure you take a deep breath, but also I'm gonna sort of move my brush back and forth. So I'm starting on this side, I'm gonna flip it over. I know I've got paint all over, so I might use just that side. And all I wanna worry about now is getting a straight-ish line right across this middle section. So either you can use your small brush or I'm gonna use my big brush, but I'm gonna kind of hold it more like this. And I'm gonna start inside my mountain range and drift down and I'm pushing down a little more on the tips of my brush to try to make all that paint sort of fall to the bottom of my paintbrush. So it goes right across. I'm gonna do it one more time. There we go. And then my little finesse lap where I'm gonna just sort of push that paint around. So I used my big brush. I made sort of a more blue greeny color and I made sure it's really light because as it goes far back into time or into space, time space, so it gets farther back into space, it's gonna get a lot lighter. So I could have even gone a little bit lighter, but for the sake of moving on and not noodling on mixing paint, I did that. All right, so now we at least have the whole canvas is covered and you kind of know where you're gonna go. So the next things that we're gonna do is all up to you. I'm gonna put in a couple of trees and in my right side, I've got maybe three. I've got three. And then on the left side, I've got maybe one. I'm gonna go back to the color that I used for my grass. So if you don't have any more of this color, it was green with a lot of yellow. So uh, a lot of yellow, a little bit of white, and just a touch of blue until you get a nice grassy green color. Okay, so the ones that are in my right side, they're a lot of different um, heights. So the first one, it's almost in the middle, and it's just a little guy. So I'm gonna start with a little line, and then I get bigger as I go. So a little line here, and then I'm gonna get a little bit bigger, sort of a football shape, almond shape, however you wanna call it. And this one doesn't really go any higher than my mountain range. And I'm just bringing it just below my horizon line. It won't matter where it ends over here because we're gonna cover it up, but just so it kind of gives you an idea of where they sit in life or on your canvas, that helps. All right, so that first one, it's a little guy. It's way back there and close to the road. So these next two, I like to put two trees together. It's just a thing. Um, so I wanna make sure that one, I keep looking off to the side here, one is a little bit taller, so I'm gonna go above my mountain range, just bring it down. And then the second one, I want it to be close to it, so I'm gonna make this one a little taller. And then this one's gonna break that mountain range too, so it looks like it's higher. And then I'm bringing him down. So I've got my grassy green color. I'm making these sort of evergreeny trees these ones are closer to us because they're bigger and also they're gonna have a little more contrast. So I've got these two that are right up against each other, with my little football shape. And I'm not worried about the bottom part down there. So I'm just worried about this top section. It's got a nice little point. It's not super duper, it's not a really clean point cause it's just, you know, a bush or a tree or whatever. So you don't want it to be super clean. I've got three over here. They're a little more right there because I can see my mountain range. And now I've got one over here. So this one is, I'm gonna say kind of in the middle of from the road to the end and it goes up a little bit higher. I'm gonna make it a little higher than those ones. So I'm gonna go up a little bit higher and I'm gonna bring it down almost to the bottom because this tree is gonna be real close. And I'm gonna lightly just patch this in real quick. All right. So we have four trees. Some are closer than the others. And I wanna add in just a little bit of depth here. So what I wanna do 
make sure I'm finishing painting this bit here. There we go. So now what I'm gonna do is pick my light direction. So the light needs to come from somewhere and I'm gonna have it come up from my right hand side down left. So that means when I put in a highlight, I'm gonna take a dirty brush, my small brush and some white. Nope, this one needs yellow. So I changed my mind. I'm gonna scrape this off. I'm not gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna use straight yellow. So the reason that I'm changing it, so our trees have a little bit of yellow as our highlight, and then we're gonna use a little bit of our mountain range green as sort of a low light or a shadow. And then when we go into our main trees or bushes, whatever we're calling it, I'm gonna use straight white for that. And what's gonna happen there is it's two different trees, so they're reflecting light differently. And also it's not gonna be the same color a whole bunch of times. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got my small brush, yellow paint, and right, and it's just short little, not straight lines. I'm gonna kind of give it a little bit of a curve. I'm gonna go down that right hand side of all of my trees. Doesn't matter how far down you go because you're gonna end up covering a little bit of it, but I would rather go a little farther than I need than just do that very top part and then you'll be able to see it between where your two different trees sort of uh, align. So that's a lot of yellow. Down that right hand side and I've got just those little short strokes. I'm gonna do a couple and then move on. I'm not so much worried about that little one in the background. So I might put a little bit of shading in it, but that highlight, because it's sort of a toned down highlight, you might not see that one way far in the back because of that atmosphere stuff. All right, so I've got my highlight. It's all across that side there. The low light, like I said, so I wanna use my sort of mountain rangey green color. And what that's gonna do is just give it a little extra shade off to the side. This isn't quite as dark as it should be. So, hey, guess what? I'm gonna use this little one that I did over here that was way too light. So I'm using my darker shade of my mountain rangey. So if you've just got this one, add a scoop of blue into it and it'll darken it up a little bit. Nothing needs to be perfect. And I'm just going down that left side. Just quick little strokes just to make it not one solid color. And I'm gonna make this little tree is closer. So it's gonna have that shadow right in front. So now I just placed one tree is in front of the other by putting that little bit of shadow. Now this one's got all of its tree showing and that one's sort of peeking out from behind it. And just because I don't like solid colors, I'm gonna give this little tree just a little bit of shading right there. All right. We are very close here. So there's only a couple more things left. We've got our little mountain range, not mountain range. We have our bushes to put in. So the bushes, there's a lot of them and we're gonna use our big brush and make a whole bunch of green paint now. I am rinsing my brush out just a little bit and I'm drying it off on my rag here. Doing a lot, not a great job but it doesn't matter because I'm just making more green. So this is the last green that I'm making. So I'm gonna probably end up going over some of this stuff up here and I'm, I'm okay with it. I just don't wanna go down into the brown. So, um, got a weird dry bit here, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm gonna make a new green. So this green is gonna be what I'm gonna call a typical green. Uh, I can use some of this stuff here. But, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna take a big scoop of yellow here. So I'm gonna go in, get a big old scoop of yellow, and then I'm gonna get a scoop of white. So I've got a scoop of yellow and a scoop of white, and I'm gonna mix this in and see what I get. It's a very yellow green, <laughs> go figure. So now, I'm gonna take, just like before, a little bit of blue until I get a color that I like. If it gets too crazy, get a new plate and go for it. What I wanna make sure that I have is enough of this color. So I'm really making sure I've got a good amount of it. And then every so often, I wanna hold it up 
make sure it's got, here, I'm gonna paint the edge and then hold it up to my grass color. I wanna make sure it's not close enough to the same color that you're gonna lose interest there or contrast. So I'm gonna go in and do a little more here. Oh, I almost got into that brown paint. This one is a lot better. Let's see, I have a ton of paint in my brush, so I'm gonna scrape some of this out. My plate is just barely hanging on here. All right, this is a good color, I'm gonna go with it. Not just because my plate is falling apart. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make just little circles. I'm gonna start with sort of the edge of my brush. Get the paint off my finger. I'm gonna start with just the edge of my brush and make little tiny circles and go down around. And as I start to get out this way, I'm gonna get a lot bigger. So the first pass, I'm gonna start out real thin. And then as I get down towards the top, I'm gonna kind of snake around here too. So I'm coming around, I'm gonna get real thin here, get nice and big over here, and then I can come back in and make those really big uh, trees in a second. So I've got my big brush, but I'm gonna hold it off to the side. I'm gonna start, well, so I'm gonna start down off a little bit and then I'm gonna work up so that if it's too thick way up here, you've got a little bit of wiggle room. So I've got a little wiggles. I'm going right up to my mountain range there. Now it breaks over my horizon line and I'm gonna do these little circles. It gets bigger as I kind of come down. I wanna keep in mind where our little shaded part is over here. And I'm gonna start making these circles a lot bigger and go right off the canvas there. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm holding it off to the side here. I'm gonna start, ah, let's start a little bit farther down. I'm gonna go up so I cross over. There was a little piece of the road that I don't like right there, so I'm gonna go ahead and cover that. And then this one's different because it snakes around. So I'm gonna go around and follow that right off the canvas there. So I've got my first round here. I started out real small, and as I get bigger, I'm going off towards those bottom corners. I wanna keep in mind where that little bit of shaded sort of parts here are. And then I'm gonna do just a couple more rounds here. There's a couple of spots that are real thin, so with a real light hand. I'm gonna always do sort of a little curved stroke so that I'm kind of keeping that same direction and cover up any of those little spots that might have been a little bit wonky. All right, a little bit more here and then I'm gonna call myself noodling. There we go. All right, so our trees go right off the end there and they come off the end, gosh, higher than our mountain range. So I'm going to start in this corner and I'm going to start making a circular sort of corner and I'm going to go up as high as I think I want to go. So let's see, I'm going to go up a little bit higher and maybe this one just doesn't cross over my mountain range. So I made that way bigger. I'm just going to make this smaller section a little bit bigger there. And I've got one side. I don't want it to just be a big circle there, so I'm gonna go ahead and break that up just a little bit with a couple of smaller little circles. And when I do that, I'm kind of smashing my brush down and get a little bit of a turn. So I'm kind of smashing that brush down and get a little bit of a turn. So the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm starting in that corner. I'm gonna do those little roundy till I get to a size that I like. I think this one is gonna cross over. And what I'm trying to do is make sure that my left side doesn't end at the same height as my right side. So I'm gonna go right over that mountain range, right across my trees there. And then that little bit of a swoops, so it's not solid, there we go. All right. I think I'm gonna raise my mountain range or my uh, these things, the bushes, up just a little bit, so it's not such a drastic go up there. There we go. 
Same thing to this side. I'm going to make these bushes a little bit bigger. So I'm going to keep that because I like it. But then this side that snakes around is going to get a lot bigger here. There we go. All right. We've just painted over a whole bunch of stuff that you may have loved. But here's how we're going to switch it up. So now I want to put in some shading first. We're going to do the highlights to the uh, bushes or trees last. So I'm going to use my big brush. I'm going to take some straight blue. And with this straight blue, I'm going to go right along this bottom edge and then probably in the corner just a little bit. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to make these sort of roundy strokes. <sighs> Perspective. You've got to have some things that are behind others. So what I'm going to do is start from the farthest back and work my way forward. And those brush strokes are going to put things that are that you painted first behind all that stuff that you paint last. So I've got, whoops, wrong color. I went into the white. I've got a little bit of blue, but I don't want to have too much. So what I'm going to do is I dipped in my blue and then I'm going to kind of tap both sides just on the edge of my palette there. So now I'm going to come across, I'm going to do these quick little roundy upstrokes. Gone through once. That was where I kind of laid the color down. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a finesse lap. I'm going over it again. I've got those little roundy strokes and it's sort of blending in. There we go. And then I'm going to hit that corner. I need just a little bit of blue here. Because that would be the bottom of a tree over there too. All right, I'm going to do it again. So I'm getting a little bit of blue. And then I'm going to kind of tap on each side of my palette here just so I don't have too much paint on my brush. I'm going to take the first lap. So this one's a little different because it snakes around. I just want to get the bottoms it's starting to fray out here. So I'm going to start a little bit lower. And I just want to hit the bottom of these bushes. Right off that corner there. There we go. So I laid the paint down. I'm going to come through, making sure I don't have too much blue on my brush when I do that. And I'm just going to give it one more real light, fluffy lap to help it blend in. Okay, the cool thing about this painting especially is that it's not quite abstract, but it's sort of bubbly and light. So it's not crazy detailed. It doesn't need to be crazy detailed. You can kind of tell what's going on. Uh, and the biggest thing is going to be the contrast. So now I've got a lot of green on here. When I put the straight white on, you're going to be able to really tell where that kind of bushes or trees, whatever it is that they are, you're going to see where they come out. So I'm going to switch to my small brush. We used brown with our small brush last, so I really want to make sure it's cleaned out. So I'm going to scrub, 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 and dry off. I'm using straight white on wet green paint. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna kind of start mixing in and it's gonna turn not straight white. <laughs> so I'm going through, I'm not gonna worry about that for the first lap. And then the second lap, I'll kind of show you a little bit of a trick on how to hold your brush to really get a nice, good, bright white stroke down. So I've got my small brush and I'm gonna go in and get some clean white. So I've got a little bit of clean white here. And I'm gonna start on the very end. So. <sighs> Let's see, which side do I want to start with? This side. So this side over here, it's really clear where the tops are and it goes all the way across. This one here is a little bit less clear because it snakes around. So I'm going to go with the one that I know for sure. I've got my little bit of white paint here and I'm going to do little swooshes. So you can see how I start getting into that green. It's going to really start blending in. So I'm going over a few times. I don't want to do loops like that unless you like it, then go with it. But I'm going to overlap. I'm doing those little roundy strokes, but they're a little more haphazard, less structured. And this is going to give me just a little bit of texture, not a whole lot of detail. But when I start farther back and I bring a couple of sections down just a little bit farther, this is where I start to kind of show that I've got different trees, bushes, whatever. And without it being a pattern, I'm gonna just make a couple little spots here 
and then move on. So if I take my artist lean, I can really see where it is. I've got kind of a weird dry brush look right there, so I'm gonna go ahead and cover that. I didn't have enough paint on there and I didn't push down very hard, so you can literally see all those little bristles. All right, doing it again. This one's a little different. So I have tops of my bushes here, which is great, but then it snakes around. So now the top of my bush is kind of right there. And I'm gonna go kind of right along, just down from the top. So I'm just slightly below the top as I go through this first section. When you get closer, it doesn't really matter so much. Get right in there. But as I go down and across, always gonna refresh my brush here. Start from the very far back. And then decide what the top of your little bush, whatever, trees, I don't care. It's whatever you want it to be, it's your painting. And a few of these little spots that come down a little farther. All right. So now I've got sort of a nice start. It blended in a lot right there. I've got a nice sort of start. I want to have just a couple of little bit of bright spots and just a few little sections. So the trick for that, I don't need a clean brush, but I need it to be pretty dry and I don't want a ton of paint in there. So that when I come in and get my white paint, I'm going to get just a little glob. I don't know how close it'll let me hold this, but I've got just a little glob of white right on the end. And I'm going to do a one and done. So every time I go in, just one little stroke, and then I'm reloading my brush. Quick little stroke, and I'm reloading. So all I want to do is throw a few little bits in here. That just gives it a little bit extra contrast. And you have given yourself a perspective-y painting that we've done this little country road. So we did some blending on canvas. We mixed a whole bunch of greens. I hope you can tell the different greens that we did. So we have our super lighter green, our little more tealy green, and then our nice big sort of basic green. Basic green seems right to me. And so I think that's it. Aside from signing your painting, so you can sign your painting in a couple of different ways. So a lot of people just use their paintbrush and go for it. But what I like to do is use my small brush, of course, but then whatever color of paint that I decide to uh, paint with, I'm gonna take a little bit of it off to the side and add just a little bit of water. And what that'll do is if I'm just using my paintbrush and I go in, it's gonna give me weird lines and stuff. But if I use that watered down paint and I go through, it's going to be a lot more solid and I can kind of glide across the canvas more. I'm not trying to do a little sketchy sketch marks. All right, so the second way, I'm going to take this plate and fold it over so I can show you how to do this. There's the second way and not a lot of people think about their entire paintbrush as a tool, but your whole paintbrush, it can be used as a ruler, it can be used as a stabby, I'm also going to use the very end of it. I'm going to use this as sort of a more pencil-like stroke. So I'm going to use the back end of my brush. Let's see. I'm going to get a big glob of paint here. So it's got a big old glob. And then when I do this, I'm going to glide that little glob of paint across my canvas. So I'm not really touching the stick part to the canvas. I'm moving that little bead of paint around. So it takes a lot longer to get, but there are some people who say they have more control over it. So it's just whatever your preference is. Maybe try both on a different piece of paper or like I did, fold your little mixing palette over and give that a go. But for the most part, it's just fun. It's either hopefully a good start for somebody who's never really painted before. Also, it's a nice warm up just to kind of not think about it and put some paint down. Just listen and uh, follow instructions and just sort of move some colors around. Please feel free to move or change any of the colors. So if you wanted to, you could put in little red dots. So now I've got an apple orchard. 
Also, you can put in little flowers, all sorts of stuff. Have fun with it. This is just a start. Hopefully you had as much fun as I did. Um, I would hope to do this again and that would take your help. So if you'd like to help, you had a good time, you want me to keep doing these, I would um, appreciate a tip or a donation. I'll leave my PayPal me down in the description and anything that you give is gonna help. But if you give $10 or more, I have a coloring book, PDF version of a coloring book. I'm not gonna get them printed because of everything going on. It's just too much of a hassle. But if you donate $10 or more to my PayPal me, not only are you helping me continue doing these and keeping them on YouTube, you're gonna feed me and my dog, and you're also gonna help me sort of get myself out there and do more aside from just this, like in real life stuff. So when things open up, I would really like to be able to do big group parties again. That's all on hold, but if you want to do something like that, get a hold of me. I'm hoping for August we'll be able to kind of start planning again. So I have a PayPal me. If you appreciated what I'm doing and you'd like to support me and uh, get me going doing more of these, I'll leave my PayPal me down in the description. I appreciate you coming in and watching me paint, if for nothing else than to laugh at me. Uh, I hope to see you again. I'm going to do one of these very soon. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.